Wargame Gamers, welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm the Wargame Game Captain. I'm Lynn. And today we're going to be reviewing and talking about how you play Jim Henson's Labyrinth the Adventure Game. So this is sort of like a role-playing game light. And this game is published by River Horse. I'm going to show that there. And was the, the rules were written by Jack Caesar and the adventure was written by Ben Milton and I've got actually their pictures right there to look at so this is a game obviously based on the movie of Jim Henson's Labyrinth and uh, it is a bit of a a lighter style role-playing game uh, it actually has listings like a board game usually does mm -hmm. and it lists itself as ages six and up for two or more players and for 30 plus minutes, and that means per session, not for the whole game, because there's a, lot, a big book here. Uh, but basically meaning that you could play, you're, you should probably play about 30 minutes to get enough adventures done. But you can leave a bookmark in to leave yourself left off at any particular area. But uh, I would say most of the sections in this, four big sections of this book are probably around an hour to two hours to fully get through that section of the labyrinth. Um, now, the six and up, what do you think about that? That's a very young estimate. Um, I mean, the rules are very light. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe? I mean, I, I think... <laughs> if it's not not like a bunch of six-year-olds by themselves, no. but a six-year-old with like their family, sure. And an I adult could, running I it. I see that, yeah. You, you, yeah, you, you definitely couldn't play this with just a group of six-year-olds because you need someone who's faster at reading to be the Goblin King and therefore run the game and control everything. But this is obviously very much meant to be like a family weight role-playing game. Mm -hmm. It's very much the kind of game to introduce people to role-playing who have never role-played before, either children or just people new to, to gaming in general. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's talk a little bit about the production. So you've got this lovely cover where they have this great illustration uh, showing a lot of the characters, including, of course, David Bowie right there, um, front and center, the top of that illustration. This is, the cover illustration is great. On the back, you have, you know, blurb, because this, this comes wrapped in plastic. And the price, by the way, uh, is the suggested retail for U.S. is $45 American dollars. So that's what it looks like with the dust cover on. Once you take the plastic off, though, if you were to remove the dust cover, and this is something that I think is freaking awesome. So if you take the dust cover off, the book underneath is a cloth cover and is obviously meant to be a replica of the script book that Sarah was reading in the movie in the beginning of the movie. In fact, I think there's a picture in the back of her doing that because they have production stills from the movie in the back of the book. There it is, there's a picture of her with the book, uh, which is pretty awesome. So, uh, that, this is freaking amazingly cool. Um, inside the cover, you have a nice maze slash labyrinth design inside the cover. And I think that's called the flyleaf, that page? I'm not positive. One I of think the one of the pages is called the flyleaf. I think this is the flyleaf. I think you're <laughs> okay. correct. Uh, and then, well, then once you get into past that page, you have an area that is cut out, and they refer to it as the oubliette, which is awesome. I love that they call it that. And it's cut out to fit two six-sided dice in it. And the two six-sided dice are these nice red dice with white pips. I'm going to show you them there. But instead of the ones, because ones are bad, they have the owl, like how the Goblin King Jareth in the movie would turn into an owl. And, the well, first off, the fact that it comes with a pair of dice, so that it literally, with the exception of paper and pencil, this literally comes with everything you would need to play. Mm -hmm. If you don't have any dice, this comes with a pair of custom dice. And the fact that they, they did the hollowed out section in the book, I think is so cool. I just, I get like childlike glee from things like this when, when publishers do this in books. Yes, but they... How many times have we dropped them? Because we've opened the book and they just come I don't. I, I don't care. I do not care. I think it's awesome. I think it's really great. So, all right. Then you get inside 
and you've got um, a few different sections. So the first, you have the rules section. Now the rules go from page two to page 35. So as you can tell, there's not a huge amount of rules in here. This is a very rules light sort of game. Uh, we're gonna get into how the rules work in a minute. Then once you get past that, the entire rest of the book is the actual adventure, which is a series of encounters, just like in the movie. You know how in the movie she came across the guys who said one of us always lies and one always tells the truth and she came across the worm and, and he told her how to start navigating her way through the labyrinth and he, she came across the bunch of goblins who were attacking Ludo who had been caught in a trap up in a tree. These are the kind of encounters you come across and but there are many many more and after leaving an encounter you roll a die to see how far you're moving through the labyrinth. So I just rolled a six I would move six encounters through the labyrinth. And you keep doing that until you get to the next section. And the sections are the stone walls, the hedge maze, the land of yore, which is the part of the labyrinth that doesn't really look like a labyrinth. Think the forest, the bog of eternal stench, and the junkyard. Uh, then the goblin city, and then the castle. And then there's uh, some, some appendices with a tool index, which has lots of cool stuff for creating your own adventures and such. Uh, and a, just a, a regular index. And then there's a gallery of stills from people when they were working on the movie, as well as models and puppets and everything, which, I mean, this alone is freaking awesome that they did that, that they have all these lovely color pictures in the back. It's absolutely gorgeous. The book itself is full of pieces of artwork, uh, and the artwork is fantastic. The page, the encounters are each two pages, which often have um, varieties of things that can happen in that single encounter. A lot of times you roll dice to see what happens. Um, let's, let's talk a little about the rule set. So uh, character creation, this is super fast and easy. I'm gonna grab a character over here uh, from our game that we're playing. So here we have a character. Uh, the character sheet has no numbers on it. There are no stats. Mm -hmm. You're, you get a name, you pick a race, your choices of race are human, dwarf, horned beast, like what Ludo was, knight of yore, which is like what Sir Didymus was, uh, a worm, like the worm in the beginning, a fiery, like those guys who like to take their body parts off and throw them around while they sing and dance, uh, a goblin, or, um, is that, is that, I think that's all of them, I, I believe. So. I believe that's all the all the species. So um, you pick one of them, and they all come with inherent traits and flaws. Uh, traits are things that you'll be better at. Flaws are usually things that you're bad at. Mm -hmm. And then you pick one trait for yourself and one flaw for yourself based on what you want to be good at and what you want to be bad at. And what, the way this works is, so let's say you need to roll for something. And I'm going to give it to Lynn. Lynn, you're going to be the character. So I'm going to say, okay, um, there is a gap in the walkway and it's three feet wide. It's not that wide. So I'm going to say it's a difficulty to jump. So now if Lynn does not have anything that helps or hinders her with jumping, she would just need to roll the die and get a two or better. So let's see what you get. Lynn got a five. Good roll. So she jumps over the jump. Now let's say, on the other hand, let's say Lynn's a different character. And Lynn has running and jumping is one of her traits. That would mean she gets two dice. So now let's make it a little harder. Let's make it a six foot jump and let's say we're gonna do it as a four or better. So it's a little harder, but now she's got that advantage because she has running and jumping as a trait. She rolls two dice and she takes the better of the two. Five again. <laughs> so you got a five and a three. So the three would have been a failure if she had rolled it by itself, but having got the five because she was able to roll two, that's good. Now if a negative trait affects you, you roll two dice and you take the lower of the two. And if you have both a positive and a negative, they cancel each other out and you're just rolling one die again. So in that way, this is basically the whole rules. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really everything for just about anything you can think of to do. Uh, there's really no combat system to speak of. There's not much in the way of an experience system. There's sometimes uh, uh, specific adventures and encounters that might give you a new trait. But there's not a lot of... Um, really leveling up and there's no not really any combat to speak of there's not a chance of characters dying off which is why it's it's very forgiving for new gamers mm -hmm. um so what are your thoughts on the game system i think it's very uh easy and simple to pick up so it's good for children and yes. families indeed 
Now, you had said, though, and we were discussing this before, you had said you thought that even though it's a strength, it's also a weakness, uh, specifically for if you're trying to play this, I guess, with people who are into more higher level hardcore role playing games. I, I don't know. I, I felt a little bored playing it. I, there is not much, there's not much story. It's just like, you know, you, you read a puzzle, we figure out the puzzle, we go to the next page. We re you read the puzzle, we figure out the puzzle, you go to the next page. It's, it's a series of encounters. It's Yeah, and it's just, I don't know, that didn't really... I've never played anything like this before. It's and, pretty unique. And it didn't, it didn't really do anything for me. Okay, in that regard. Yeah. Okay, because you have said you... you we a little bit of spoiler here, but you have said you do like the game. Yeah, I so can, you're not when, don't don't say it didn't do anything for you when I, you're about to say you liked the game. No, I mean I I I can see that it's a positive and also a negative and yes. how simple it is. So uh, I'm more on the positive side than you are. Now you are you will and a little bit of a spoiler here. You will wind up being positive because you have told me you are overall positive mm -hmm. on this game. Uh, I think that the game system, one, I think that the the ease of teaching and the, the fact that this is a fantastic um, game to teach kids how to role play, to teach people who've never role played before how to role play, especially if they're fans of the movie Labyrinth, I think is great. It's super approachable. It's very easy to run as a game master. Uh, you can just pick this up and run it for like a party uh, and just do like a one-off whether or not you actually pick it up and finish going all the way through because it's going to take probably about four on average four sessions of an average of about <clears throat> one to two hours each to fully get through the whole game um i would say though that you don't even need to pick it up again like if you just want to run it for a party it'd be great for a one-off you just like you say you just do a bunch of puzzles mm -hmm. You, you, you solve a bunch of problems. People can make their characters. Like, we made an, an entire party of characters for our first game in 10 minutes. It was longer than that. Well. You're exaggerating. I think it was pretty quick. I think it was pretty quick. I don't think I'm exaggerating <laughs> that much. So, all right. Negatives. You said you thought it was a bit too light and that there's not uh, enough of an overarching story. Yeah. Um, it was, was your big negative. Yeah. Did you have anything there's, else to there, Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, it's just that there's, you know, it's just, you know, you, you pick why you need to get to the castle. Yes. But I mean, like... Because the really, Goblin King has stolen something from you. It, Each character picks what they've stolen. It didn't stolen. really... I don't know. I felt no connection with it. Because there wasn't... Maybe because it was so much quicker with character building? Maybe. I don't know. All right, but now positives. Let's do some positives. So uh, why don't you give us some positives on Labyrinth? It's very easy to play. So I love that your positive and your negative is literally the same thing. <laughs> um, that's hilarious. That is. So you are of two minds on this game. Like you, on one hand, you're like, like it's so easy. On the other hand, it's so easy. So <laughs> I love, I love that that I, I think it's hilarious. I think it's absolutely hilarious that, that your positive is also your negative. Okay, so I'm gonna do some other positives. First off, the production on this is phenomenal. There's three cloth bookmarks which are really good for helping to keep your place while you're going through the actual adventure. That is really great. Um, they, the dice are really nice. The cloth binding, um, the excuse me, cloth cover, cover thread binding, um, wonderful artwork inside, and the hollowed out area for the dice inside the book, as well as this nice thick like cardstock um, dust cover with yeah, the beautiful this, artwork on it. This is way thicker than a normal dust cover. Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's like a thick cardstock. This, the production on this is off the charts. I mean, this is one of the... I would put this in my top 10 best produced role-playing game books I've ever seen. It's so cool. I, I love that they made it look like the book from the movie. I love that they have production stills in the back. And I love that they have such amazing artwork. And I, I, I really like the very simple role-playing game. I like how it's an introductory role-playing game i enjoy that i think that's really cool uh do you have any other pluses i haven't i haven't touched on there um, um i know you've talked about that you really like the production too but i've i kind of three jumped bookmarks on oh you love the three bookmarks yes the three cloth bookmarks are freaking awesome um yeah so this is this is a very easy game to play it's very light it's very approachable 
Uh, FYI, we're going we're going to be recording some sessions of this and putting them up on the channel. So stay tuned for some of those. By the way, if you want to see how the game actually plays. But I think um, I think we're ready to review this one. Mm -hmm. uh, so do you want to go? Let, I'll let you go first because I think I'm more. <laughs> well, I think I'm more positive. So I think you should go first so that I can finish on the higher note. Okay. So how many stars? Uh, with everything we've talked about, ups and downs, uh, how many stars out of ten are you going to give to Jim Hev Jim Henson's Labyrinth: The Adventure Game? I'm gonna give it seven. Okay, so seven is it's quite positive. Uh, the, the, yeah. Because I mean, I did enjoy playing it. Mm -hmm. Um, I just wish there was a little bit more to it. You wish you wish they had gone a little heavier in the rules and a little heavier on the story. Yeah. Well, okay. Not even the rules. Like just the story, I, then. I'm fine with the rules. It's just it's literally there's like no story. Well, there's there's a there is a minor like story. The Goblin but it's... King stole something from you, and then you 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 yourself have to decide what that is. And yeah, but I don't you, know. It just to be fair, that's that's the story of the movie too. I understand. <laughs> I mean, I just... it's, it's, it is it is following what the I mean the movie is. The Goblin King takes Toby. Uh, Sarah wants him back, and she has to go defeat him to get him back. And that's I understand yeah. that. And then but, it's a series I mean, of I'm, adventures. I'm sure the Goblin King does other things besides just take random things from. Apparently people. not. <laughs> that's that's what he. That is his main hobby. So uh, I'm gonna go now. Okay, seven is quite positive still, even with with your negative. So that being said, I'm a bit higher, and the reason I'm a bit higher is I I. I love, like I said, I love this as an introductory role-playing game, and I really love how easy this is to just pick up and play, and I can see myself many times in the future just picking this up and playing it with people to introduce them to the concept of role-playing, especially people who have never role-played before, and especially with children. And because of that, I'm going to go a bit higher. I'm going to give this an 8.5 stars out of 10. Uh, now, that is a full star and a half higher than you, and now... I think about half of that, a half a star of that is literally just because of how amazingly beautiful this book is and the fact that they put in the cutout area for the dice and the three cloth bookmarks and the beautiful artwork and the fact that it's a replica of the book for the movie. I mean, that's like a whole, that might even be a whole star. I'm not sure. <laughs> that's like half a star to a whole star of my rating is just how gorgeous this is. Because this is absolutely beautiful. But the game is also super fun too. And I've been running it. And it's very, very user friendly to run. It's so easy. So yeah, I, I really enjoy it. But like I said, stay tuned. We're going to be posting some videos of us playing it. Um, do you have anything else to add? No. So if you enjoyed this review and tutorial. Uh, oh, excuse me. Just review. For Jim Henson's Labyrinth, the adventure game, and you'd like to see us do more role-playing game reviews like this one, be sure to give this video a like, share it on all forms of social media, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Board Game Captain. That's Captain spelled with a K on YouTube. And until next time, game, game on! on.